Hi, and welcome to part three of a PowerShell GUI tutorial series. So in the last few videos, we've made some Hello World applications with just some buttons and some simple actions. In this one, we're going to be making a slightly more complex application. So uh, this is what we're going to be making uh, today. So let me just zoom in here so you guys can see it. Uh, so it's just a very simple, I call it a service inspector. So it basically loads in all the services running on your computer. And then you'll be able to see the friendly name of the service and the status of the service. And if it stopped, it'll be in red. Um, and if it is running, it'll be in uh, green. There we are. So the green is running and then stopped is red. And then we're just going to have a drop down, which uh, will be automatically populated with all the services running on your computer. So let's go ahead and let's close out of this here. Let's just zoom back out here. And let's get started on creating that application. So the first thing we're going to always want to do, uh, like we've seen in the other videos here, is we're just going to add type. And then the assembly name, which is the system dot windows and dot forms. All right. And then we'll, all we're going to do is we're going to create all of our objects for all the different types of elements. Um, so what we're going to be doing in this first video, because I'm going to break this down into two videos, just because uh, there's definitely a lot going on in this form. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to create the drop down and load the drop down. And then in the next video, we're going to make um, the functionality of clicking and then getting the information down below. Uh, so really, the majority of the new part of this video is getting the drop down. Um, and then in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to actually use the index change uh, to trigger the event and change the stuff down here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to definitely want to build a form. We're going to want to have a label and we're going to have a combo box, which is the drop down box. Uh, so let's first create our form object here. Uh, so we're going to do new. Let's just do system dot windows dot forms dot forms, and then we're going to have a label object, uh, which is going to be system dot windows dot forms dot labels. And then we're going to have our combo box object, which, as you've probably guessed, system.windows.forms.combo box. That should give us everything we need. So now let's go ahead and let's create our form. Uh, so I'm going to call this app form, which is going to be a new object so let's create a new object of the form object type and then what we're going to do is we're going to want to create some of the properties so as we've seen in the last few videos when i do a dot i don't get any of the properties of this object right now so let's go ahead and let's just run this here and now we get some properties so let's do the client size once again and we're going to just make this equal to, I just kind of like starting with the default size of 500 by 300. I usually find that that's pretty sufficient. And then we're going to have our text, which is just going to be put Jack programmer and then service inspector. And then our background color, which should be back color. And let's put that to white. 
All right, that should be good. So now let's just make sure that the form pops up and opens for us. So all we need to do here is do app form dot show dialog. And then just to make sure that we get rid of any variables after and just dispose of the form properly, we're gonna add the dot dispose at the end. Uh, so this is going to be our garbage collection and then show the form. All right. So let's see what this looks like right now. So as we see, we just get our window. There's nothing in it. Uh, we do have, if I zoom in here, we do see that it does say Jacked Programmer Service Inspector and our background color is white. So this is perfect so far. Uh, so let's just zoom back out here. And now what we're gonna wanna do is we are gonna wanna add the label and the dropdown. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Uh, so what I like to do is I just like to separate out, uh, so set up base form, and then let's go building the form, all right. Uh, or building the, the window, building the GUI. Um, you can really kind of label it pretty much as you would really want there. Um, so let's create a label here. So we're just gonna create a label on service and we're gonna do a new object of label object. Once again, I just always like to run this at that point so I can get the properties for it. So let's do label.service.text. And that's going to be services. And then label service dot auto size, as we know, we always set this to true. This way we just don't have to figure out the height and the width. And now let's go ahead and let's place it. So dot location equals new object system dot drawing dot point. And let's put this to 2020. All right, and as we know from the last few videos, what we do have to do is we have to add these to the form. So let's do app form dot controls dot add range. And let's add the label service. And let's see how this looks like. Here we are, so we do have our services here. So if I just zoom in once again, we do see services. It is quite small. Um, so we're gonna wanna take a look to see why it's so small and how we can actually change this. Uh, so let's just zoom back out here. So what, what I like to typically do is up here where I'm setting up all like the variables, I like to set up a default font. And then let's set this to Verderna 10. And then what we're gonna wanna do is, so there's two ways that we can do it. We can either do it directly on the labels and then do font, but then you would have to do it for every control afterwards if you wanna keep the font the same. What I like to do is I like to do it at the form level and go font and then equals default font. Now I stored in a variable, this way it's just easy to change if I ever use it somewhere else um, or anything like that. Or I might have like multiple settings for fonts. Like I might have a specific font for buttons, a specific font for labels. I always set them at the top. So I only have to change them once and then they'll get changed everywhere. That's just kind of something that I really like to do. And you can do that with all the other um, properties here. Like you could definitely put the client size up here and that would save you having to scroll to find it. 
Um, just little things like that definitely make uh, programming these a little bit easier um, when we don't have Visual Studio uh, code yet to our availability to create that XAML code that I'm going to be showing you in a few videos. So now that we have that in there, let's go ahead and let's run this here. So as we can see, services definitely seems already a little bit bigger. Let me just zoom in here. So we do see it is definitely bigger. So that is perfect. And what we can even do here is we can change it to 12 and it'll be even bigger. And that looks pretty good. That might be a little bit too big, but we can always adjust it later on. All right, so let me just zoom back out here. So now that we have our label, now all we need to do is we need to add our dropdown. Um, so let's go ahead and let's call that or our combo box. Um, now, what I like to do is I like to use DDL um, as a drop down list. Even though it is a combo box, I really recognize them as drop down lists. So I usually use DDL and then service. So I use this naming method because I know that the label is for the label of for service and then DDL service is going to be the drop down list for services. So it's just really, really easy to know, really easy to read your variables to what they are. Uh, so that's always very, very handy. So let's create a new object here. And let's create a combo box object. And then label service and then we are going to go ahead and do a uh, location here and we are going to want to do a new object system dot drawing dot point and we are going to want it at the same Y level as our label, um, but a different X. So what we're going to want to do is let's try um, 140 and 20 and let's see what that looks like. Um, and let's give it a width. Uh, now, the reason why we can't do a auto size here, and actually I just noticed you guys are probably Notice this before me. Uh, let's try that to drop down list service. And let's set up a width here because we're going to be loading this dynamically. Um, so it definitely causes us a little bit of an issue with the auto size in this case. So let's do a width. And let's just do a width of 300 just to be on the safe side. All right, so that should be good. And let's add our DDL service. And now we have our drop down list. There's no items in it, so we haven't populated it. As you can see, actually, this first try actually ended up being pretty good. Um, Let's move it a little bit closer to the services. Just this way we're making the most possible room. And that looks pretty good, I would say. Uh, so everything lines up pretty nicely, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's load in this drop-down box. So what we're going to want to do here is we already know the command for getting the services, which is just get service. If I run this, we can see at the bottom here, we get all of our services. So what we want to do is we want to put all the services in this dropdown list. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pipe this to a for each object. And then we're going to do DDL service dot items dot add. And we're going to reference our piped in um, value and we're going to do a dot name. So what this all does 
Um, so let's just run this real quick. I'm going to show you guys what, what it does. So as we see here, we have all of our services in this list. So how does this line work? So it basically gets all the services, and then for each service, it will pass it through this pipe. Um, and that's what this character is called. It's called the pipe operator. So it will pass each object into that pipe. And then for each of those objects, it will add the name property of that object into the items of the dropdown list of service. So another way to write this, so if I just actually comment this out here and we do services equals get service and then for each service in services and we do edl service dot items dot add and we do a service dot name whoops service dot name now we should in theory get the exact same result and there we are so we have the exact same result just written in one line and not taking up as many variables um, so you could do it either which way um, you really prefer um, I'm going to stick to the one line and get rid of this here. And what I usually like to do is I usually just like to load the drop down list or services. Just this way people know what you're doing uh, if they ever have to come read your code. So now all we want to do is when we actually open this, we actually see that nothing is selected, which actually, in my case, I actually prefer this over the first one that I made. The first one that I made, I actually automatically selected the first index, which just doesn't, to me, really appeal. Um, I'd rather just have nothing selected and then just have me have to pick something. Now, what we could do, I believe this will work. So let's actually give this a try. So if we do DDL service dot text here, and then we go just close out of this here. So DDL dot text equals pick a service. Then if I actually run this, it says pick a service. Perfect. So that actually ends up working and then pick a service disappears. So that is awesome. All right. So that actually worked out great. So now we have all of our form pretty much built. Uh, so if we run this, the only parts that we're missing is down here uh, to show the friendly name and the actual status. So we're actually going to work on that on the next video because we're approaching um, a pretty lengthy video so far. So I'm going to end it off here. So what we're going to be doing on the next video is we're going to be picking an element from here and we are going to be loading some labels down uh, in the form with more information on that service. So in this video, we've seen how to load drop down lists. Um, so that's really, really awesome. <clears throat> and that's really the major takeaway. And then the next one is we're going to be seeing how to actually execute an action based on the selected index change of this drop down list um, and just get more user input. And then we're going to be seeing some uh, different controls. Um, afterwards and we can make some different applications. If you guys have any applications that you would kind of like to see built um, or any controls that you want to see used or how to use, leave a comment down below and I will definitely get to those very quickly for you guys. Um, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and I will see you on the next video.